Look, people, I'm on Instagram. I've only got 29 followers. Come follow me. Well, you don't have to follow me on Instagram, but it helps. Alright, welcome back. Mission today. I'm going to start on the valve stem seals. They've got to be changed. We're going to try and do that with a head on. That's mission number one. Mission number two is for me to try and act like an adult. Because I look back on some of the things in videos and I think, oh, you act like such a child, Steve. So I'm going to try and act sensible today. A lot of time I feel quite sensible and then something in my head will say something stupid to me like, Steve, do the salmon impression. So, today, I'm going to try and keep it normal, be sensible, just get the job done on the car. So let's go, let's make a start. Right, so this is the task. Valve stem seals got to be changed on you. If you just tune in for the first time to my channel, these are not that old. I haven't long done a full head rebuild when I ported it. I put brand new stem seals in, obviously head gaskets, they're all new gaskets, and the stem seals are leaking within a couple of hundred miles, so they were a cheap set from Euro car parts, so they're junk. I'm not taking the head off. The trick's going to be here is can we change these stem seals by leaving the head on, so let's show you what I've got in here. Right, so we've got a genuine Ford Walker cover in here. There, you get the idea. Because I've been using the cheapy ones and it just keeps leaking. We got some Victor Rhines valve stem seals from Burton Power. I've been sure they're a good make, a lot cheaper than Ford's. And then we've got this little kit here, which is. Um, going to hopefully help me to get the valve stem seal sorted without taking the head off so this is going to work i hope well it is going to work i'm going to make it work and if it doesn't work i'm going to find a way of making it work so the head isn't coming off we're going to get it done you've probably seen in my other videos me doing timing belt bits and bobs and all that junk and messing it up so what i'm going to do now is i am going to strip everything off cams off timing belt obviously rotter cover we're going to be ready to change the stem seals and that's going to be when I next going to put the camera on. Right, everything is stripped off now. I'll be soon ready to start making the change. If you can look at this plug though, often get a focus. But can you see there is oil where it shouldn't be? Let's have a look. I can't tell if I was picking it up, but anyway. The lower part of the play, there you are, you can see him now, he's uh, it's wet. The last not few works, it haven't been started for a week or so, I think. There you are, you can see him nice now. That is oil, so he's dripping straight down the valve, straight onto the plugs. That might be part of the reason why it's so difficult to start, since I've done the head. Right, I've got all the cams and all my bits in here, they're all in order. It makes sense to me, so now I'm going to make a start, dig out this kit and make a start on getting the valves out. Oh, i got to show you the one trick I'm going to use first. Right, so you're probably wondering how I'm going to stop the valves falling into the head. And that's where this rope comes in. I've dropped number one cylinder right down to the bottom. I'm going to feed this rope in and then pull the piston back out. Crushed up rope then inside will will hold the valves up and stop them dropping in. I never done this before but it's what I've seen on the internet and they say when you put in the rope in to try and twist it, try and get it to coil and get as much in as you can so that's what I'm gonna do. Right so that's rammed full now with as much as I can get. It's surprising how much goes in there, probably about six foot or more. That's what it feels like anyway, rough guess. So now I'm gonna turn the piston up and get the pressure right up on it as hard as I can and then hopefully you will hold the valves up. Okay, so I've rigged up the valve compressor tool. Got it onto the cap out there. See, I was just thinking, you don't need a valve compressor tool, but it helps. Certainly helps. All right, let's give him a crank down, see if we can get a call out to it. There you are. 
could have picked him out. This one. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to do cylinder number one and then move along. There she blows. Well, can you see that? That is the problem. Thank you very much, Euro Car Parts. Look how bad that is. Look. Just, just pull it off. So all you people who are saying I got ring issues, get over yourself. That was the problem. Right, so now I'm going to try and get these on. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a straw over there. So the new stem seal, as it drops over the ridges and the valve, I don't want to cause any damage. I've never tried this before, so I've already oiled them up. Pop them over. Let's get them on the straw first. Let's get them down, pop them over, see if it works. Just prevent the seal from going over them three ridges and causing any issue. Right, so that one is now done. Springs back on, collets are in, and it's quite tank consuming. Getting them back in is probably going to manage as a right faff. But we get in there. So I'm only in Lutz now, right? And they just the same look. Split right open. By the way, these are absolute nightmare to get off. I haven't got a proper tool, so, you know, a proper tool does help. But I think Euro Car Parts should go by the motto that you don't need good quality stem seals, but it helps. Right, so that's all of all four valves on number one done. I've dropped the piston down. I'm curious to see how much rope comes out there, see how much is in there, so. Let's hope it comes out. Keep it tight. Let me keep my hand there. So we know how long it is. That's a lot of rope. Okay, so just finished the last one, all done. Everyone has changed. Come in and have a look, right? These are the, the old ones. Quite a few of them are completely decapitated. So I was hoping to find at least one good one. And the best condition ones I could find was a couple of the inlets, but if I do that, you can already see the split in the start in there. So it's just a matter of time. I think what might have been the issue is the when I had a look inside, they seem to narrow on the inside on the top part there more than the new ones. And I think it was probably pressure on the the valve guide, so they were getting stretched. So you know, it's an advert for buying good parts, really. So I've learned a big lesson there. But like you say, you live and learn. Right, so the timing belt is all on. What I'm going to show you, but I'm showing the whole process. But I'm going to show the cause of the P1381 over advance on the ST170, and it's it's a pretty common issue. So, say so belt's all on. I've got this flop here. Now the VVT pulley will free float, but watch, I'll turn this now, watch the cam, it'll stay exactly still. See that turning movement there, that's because the VVT mechanism will turn. So if you just had your belt fitted like that, it's alright, I'll do my tensioner up. Watch now as I, I'll just pull this tensioner by hand. It's not the easiest to do, it's one hand in. Right, ready? See the pulley tighten up? Now, if you look at my white marks there, see them where they're out of sync? 
So if you now go tighten everything up, go running the engine, you're going to get the over, over advanced code because that's already started and it throws the engine into a fit. So I'm going to tighten all this up and I'll show you how to, how to remedy that. So obviously I have to tighten that. It has to be in that position as it is now, but I'll show you the fix for it now. Okay, so the belt's tightened up. I'm just now going to remove the cap here. I've got a rag to catch any oil that's going to come out from in the VVT poly. So this is just uh, the oil cover cap. It isn't the actual bolt for the poly. Okay, so by slackening that off now, we've allowed the inner VVT mechanism to self right itself. We're not going to see a change in these lines here, so we don't need to worry about that. All we worry about is the inner VVT has flipped itself to its neutral position. Now you just tighten it back up. Okay, so I've just tightened that now to the top 68 newton meters. After that, put your cap back on and the job is done. Right, so that's it. Everything is done. Other than the cover, boy. Now it's the moment of truth. Will it start? Will it fire? Let's give it a go. Pretty sweet. Let's go have a look. Sounds alright, that is. Sounds alright. Another thing that you may have noticed when I fired it up. Look at that, no possessed steering wheel. New rack is on. That was all done. I suppose it's not much for you to see. I don't even know if you can see it, but it's all on, done. Okay, so now I've got the engine all running. It's all nice and warm. I'm just checking my VVT now in uh, in my Mighty software for the um, 221. And if you look at these numbers here now, uh, the cam target, it should be at zero. It's actually at one degree, which it was anyway. You see, it flicked it to two then. So it's, it's close to the zero. The reason I'm checking now is because I've done the timing, but I don't want it to be widely out. If I want to bring that to zero, I can make a setting change here. So if I just put that to 115 just to set it over there press enter see it goes zero but sometimes it can go zero and like minus one and faff around a little bit but that's looking fine so that means now that everything is is fine the vvt as i start to rev now you'll notice the target now it wants it to be at 32 and it's showing where it actually is. So I know my VVT is spot on now, my timing is great, so I'm gonna save our setting. And that's another job that's ticked off my list. All right, okay, that's the um, end of this video, I think. Nothing more to add on that. Luckily, it went smooth. I'm pretty uh, grateful of that, because usually I mess things up, but it went all right. So yeah, that's the end. If you've stayed right to this part of the video, then thank you very much for watching. Also, I've got uh, an Instagram account as well in a spark plug Steve perhaps you want to uh, try and follow that and then I, I put some updates on there before they actually make filming on YouTube so yeah thanks for watching please give it a thumbs up as usual and uh, see you on the next one bye